What's up, guys? Um, the attendance tonight was uh, 14,605. This is our 14th consecutive sellout since coming back to live gates. Uh, the gate was 3.55 million, which we think is a, is a record again. <laughs> um, the, the, we don't know yet, though. They're checking on it. I think the last one was 3.3, but uh, the uh, performance of the Knights went to Olenek and Volkanovsky. And if I got to tell you what the fight of the night is, you shouldn't be here. Um, yeah, and then the crypto, the crypto uh, performance of the Knights, uh, they're still tallying the, the results, but uh, Lene will let you guys know when, when that comes out. Those guys get sixty thousand dollars in uh, Bitcoin. I guess uh, with Volkanovski, it might have been the performance of the year, much less performance of the night. I mean, what can you say about how good he looked tonight? Well, I think tonight he came out and made a statement. You know what I mean? That I'm I'm the baddest dude in this division of the world. He made the zombie look like he didn't even belong there, and uh, you know, fight probably could have been stopped the round before it did. But uh, he couldn't look better than he looked tonight. He looked incredible. This, uh, of course, was supposed to be a Max Holloway fight before we put in uh, Zombie. He said he thinks that's the fight you guys are probably going to make again. Do you feel like that's the way to, to lean right now is to put the fight back together with Holloway? I don't know. I mean, I don't even know. Sitting right here right now, I don't even know. Um, I don't know what's next for him, but we'll see. Co-main event, uh, obviously a back-and-forth title fight there. Uh, a lot of people had scores all over the place. I'm just curious kind of maybe, maybe how you had it scored and what you thought of, of Aljamain's performance tonight. Yeah, I thought that the, the judges blew that one. I thought I had it 3-2 to two the other way. I don't know how you guys scored it, but, you know, I, I guess it's, it, it's all in however you score that first round. You yeah, had a 3-2 for Aljamain, but that first round was so close. So I guess with that in mind, I mean, you got, you got Peter Yan in there saying, let's just do this again. You got Aljamain saying, I want T.J. Dillashaw, who was here all week. I mean, with a fight that close that you think went the other way, do you, do you book it again and do a third fight between nah, them? I, th I think you do. You, you know, listen, that fight's going to be there. Peter Yan is, is one of the baddest dudes in, in, in that division. So um, yeah, you probably probably do the T.J. fight. And, and then I'll ask you lastly about uh, the fight of the night, obviously, with Hamza Shemaev and Gilbert Burns. I mean... Gosh, they lived up to everything and more. I guess just talk about that. I mean, the, the energy was electric. It was insane. I guess, what did, what did you take out of that fight? Yeah, it's one of the best fights I've ever seen. It's one of the coolest fights I've ever been to. Um, like you said, the place was so loud and people were going crazy. I mean, that, that fight was eclipsing the co-main and main event all week. And I was, t I was talking to Rogan and Sean and Mick and everybody else. Think about this. When's the last time you saw a guy come out of nowhere? Right? Nobody knows who he is, comes out of nowhere, then, then fights a couple fights and then fights the number two ranked guy in the world and wins. You know, when you get into the top five in the UFC, no joke, man. And especially in that division. I mean, that division is straight killers. Um, you know, t t tonight was, the, was a big test for him and, and, uh, and, and he passed. I mean, think about this too. He's never had that big moment. Where coming into this week, you know, how many fights this guy got in the UFC? He's got a couple fights. He, he, the buzz for him is bigger than the main event and co-main event. Everybody's talking about him. Crowd's going crazy, like, like we're in his hometown or some shit. Um, and, and then you come out and you fight a guy like Gilbert Burns, who I'm sure completely felt disrespected going into this fight and wanted to make a point himself. So I, I, Teddy Atlas tweeted tonight, which I loved, at the end of the second round, Teddy Atlas said, we know what Hamzat Chemaev has on the outside when it comes to talent. We're about to find out what he's got on the inside now. And that was going into the third round. Nobody could have said it better. Well, I was going to say, like, what's your biggest takeaway, right? Because I see, you know, it seems like there's two paths. Either one, like you said, he just fought a real dude and gutted out a decision win. We found out he's got heart. And then there's other people that are saying, ah, see, he can't, he can't run through everybody. That, you know, he's, he's not as good as we thought he was. Well, he's human. I mean, any asshole that said that doesn't think the kid's human. He's a human being. And he just beat the number two welterweight in the world in the UFC with a couple of fights in the UFC. If you don't think he's the real deal, you're out of your mind. Yeah, he's human, you know? And, and, and funny, you know, Till keeps telling me, you know, this, this guy never gets tired. This guy never, ever runs out of energy. He never, never. But you, there's, you can't train in the gym 
for what happened tonight. You can't. I'm sure this week, leading up to this week, uh, you know, he's had a lot of ton of pressure on him, uh, a lot of anxiety, probably, uh, who knows how well he slept last night. You know, all the things that go into the buzz and energy. And then I'm sure there was a huge adrenaline dump after that first round. So you, this is shit you can't train for. And, and you either make it through it or you don't. He made it through with flying colors. The last thing for me, I'll just ask you, I mean, you said coming in, you, you thought Covington would be the right matchup for him moving forward. Now that you've seen him tonight, you still feel like that's the right fight to make? Well, that's the other thing. All these other guys who didn't want to fight him before, I'm sure, are looking at him differently now, too. But that's what happens when you break into the top five in the world in any of these weight classes. You are going in against the absolute best in the world. Gilbert Burns is number two. He almost knocked Usman out, who is the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world. So, uh, you know, for people that are saying whatever, A, you probably don't know jack shit about fighting, and B, you have to put it all into perspective. Hey, Dylan. If you mentioned that you would like to do Hamza and Colby on ABC if you could sort of get them to book on that fight. For people who don't know, how massive could that fight be? Those two big names on ABC, how, what sort of numbers do you think you could put on that? I don't know. I don't know, but it's big. I mean, you saw it tonight. We're in Jacksonville, Florida, you know, uh, with, with a Russian and a, and a Brazilian headline. You know, not headliner, but, you know, the biggest fight of the night. Everybody's going crazy. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a big fight. Do you think in a way it's almost better for Hamzat to have a fight like this, right? Instead of coming out and just knocking Gilbert out in like 15 seconds, we got to see what he has in him, what his skills are, holes in his game, stuff I like don't that. think it's better. It's, it's inevitable. Yeah. I mean, nobody rolls through anybody in, 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 when you're at, at this level. It's a, you just don't go out. You know, not to say that somebody couldn't catch somebody or, you know, and, and things like that. Those things happen, but, uh, yeah, uh, you heard Gilbert. Gilbert said, I was prepared to die tonight. I wasn't going to come in here and roll over on, you know. Some of the shots that Habzat took as well would put out most other welterweights too, right? 100%. He, he took some big shots tonight. And, uh, you know, he, 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 I, he looked good, man. This kid, how many times has he fought? And, and fought four times in what? The last, huh? Four times in how many years? Two. Two years? He's fought two, four times in two years in the UFC, you know what I mean? And uh, most of them were without a crowd. Tonight was his first, like, yeah. I thought that, that was one of the greatest fights I've ever seen. Yeah. And to be a part of, to be here in the arena. I don't know how it came off on TV, but holy shit. It was awesome in here. With a performance like that for Volkanovski, right, he showed his grit against Ortega, and then tonight he just showed there were levels at that. Is he making an argument against Usman as being perhaps the pound-for-pound pound best in the sport at the moment? He's up there. I mean, uh, if, if you, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's up there. I mean, he's number two right now anyway, isn't he? I think so, yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the, the two best guys in the world, pound-for-pound. Pound. Um, outside of tonight, I saw yesterday that Joanna versus Zhang Wiley, the rematch has been booked for Singapore. Is there any consideration to putting that five rounds, considering the first fight was such an epic, or is it going to be three rounds? Um, yeah, that's a good question. You want me to make it five rounds? Could you please? Yeah, right, we'll, we'll work on that. Thank you, I appreciate right. that. You know, uh, a lot of buzz has also been made of Ian Gary's rise. A lot of people comparing him to Conor McGregor. Even he himself says like he welcomes those comparisons. Uh, and even Connor gave him a shout-out before his fight. What did you make of his performance in there going three rounds after his uh, initial knockout win back in Madison Square Garden? Yeah, what happened with, with Connor, did you say? Connor said he, Connor gave him a shout-out. Uh, like someone asked him about Ian Gary, and he says, oh, he's looking sharp in this and that. So now even Connor is talking about Ian as kind of this next star from Ireland. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, no, he, the, the kid, kid looked good, yeah. And finally, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but Alexio Linnick got his 60th professional win. I know you gave him the bonus, but what did you make of, uh, like, his first fight was in 94, I think. Like, Kay, Kay Hansen wasn't even alive yet when, when, she, when he made his debut. So what did you make of his, uh, I know you gave him the bonus, but did you just make it his Yeah, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. And you know what else, too? This is totally off subject, but I was just thinking about it. I'm going to give Gilbert Burns his win money, too. Yeah. So he's going to get his show and win. That, that fight was ridiculous. Dana, back here. Have you ever seen anything like Hamzat? Like, I, I've been, I've, I've had 
conversations about this all week. We've had Connor, we saw him rise up, but it was almost like every time Connor won, there was questions about like, well, what if he fights a wrestler? What if he fights this guy? Right. With Hamzat heading into tonight's fight, it was almost like inevitable that people thought he was just going to run through Gilbert. Like right. there was not a matter of if he was going to win is when he was going to win. Like, have you seen anything like this this quickly? Well, I, the way that I looked at it is people were tuning in to see if he would run through Gil. Because I, even I was saying, if he runs through him the way he's run through everybody, I mean, it's just, but highly unlikely. It's like when the, when the odds came out, we were like, what? They're fucking crazy if they think that's, the, those are, the, you know, what the odds should be against Gilbert Burns. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's the amount of hype that he had, but look at what he's done. Just the punch stats alone were two something to one. Uh, you know, and, and, and the way that he destroyed guys and how easy he made it look. But I say this all the time, not just talking to you guys, but talking to other people. If you can break into the top five in the UFC in any, whatever weight class you're in, very, very few people actually do it. Very few people break into the top five. And to have four fights in two years, and, and I don't even know what the highest ranked guy he fought off the top of my head, but to go fight Gilbert Burns, the number two welterweight in the world, and do and win it, it's unheard of. And then I wanted to ask you about Mike Malott, who made his UFC debut today, and he had a ferocious knockout against Mickey Gall, and then he had a, a really good post-fight interview where he put his... He put a GoFundMe over for his boxing coach, whose 15-year-old daughter is, is, is battling cancer, and he said he's going to donate half of his fight purse to support him and, and her in this battle against cancer. What did you think of Mike's performance and, and just what he had to say after the yeah, fight? Yeah, no, he looked Amazing. good. Yeah, no, the kid looked good. He's, he's, he's fun. He's fun to watch. And uh, he can keep his ten grand, and I'll do his show and his win, and I'll donate it to his coaches. Good, yeah. So... What's that? Yeah, yeah, right? Dana. Uh, Dana. Yeah. Tonight was, <clears throat> tonight was the 600th event in UFC history. Um, obviously, it seems your business is kind of peaking more so than it ever has been. Uh, what do you feel like the growth can be for here, from here for the UFC after reaching this milestone of 600 events? Yeah, well, first of all, I didn't know that. Thanks for letting me know that. That's cool. And, uh, yeah, we're... we're uh, this thing's on fire right now, man. It's insane. You know, we're st every event has been a sellout. We're breaking records with the gates, pay-per-views, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's awesome. I mean, you, you guys know what I think and what I believe. I believe that this will be the biggest sport in the world. I believe that, you know, now that streaming is, is, is becoming a reality, and I think in the next couple of years, maybe three to five years, there's going to be three big players globally, you know, like CBS, NBC, and, and ABC. When we were growing up, um, I think there's going to be three big global players, and, and, and the entire world will be able to watch at the same time. And that was literally uh, mine and Lorenzo's dream early on in the, in, in the early days. So we're heading there. Then, then I mean, what's the ceiling? Was there seven, eight billion people in the world? And you know the sport works everywhere. I mean, I said it would, and now we know it. And God forbid, you know, uh, we get another Chinese world champion or somebody from, you know, here or there. It just, it just continues to grow and get bigger. And when you look at two of the bigger stars or names on your roster, uh, Nate Diaz and Dustin Poirier, it seems like they're both itching to fight pretty bad. Uh, do you have any update on the future of those guys? Dustin saying, you know, he's willing to fight anyone. Nate asked for his release recently in a tweet. Um, do you, where do things stand with those two? Yeah, we, we met with Nate. Uh, last week I don't know where we ended up with it but uh, I just popped in and said hi but uh, I don't know yeah we'll figure it out would you do you still like the idea of a fight between those two or would you maybe you know move on to something else with Dustin maybe yeah someone else yeah any ideas no. <laughs> okay no. thank you Dan all right Dana real quick yeah here. oh here to your left I keep oh yeah, hey, right here. I keep staring at this guy back there his mic doesn't work a lot, a lot of fans were here supporting Korean Zombie. Um, he said at the media day that this was, he knew that this was likely his last title shot, obviously 35 years of age. Um, if you could put into words what the Korean Zombie means for the promotion, obviously somebody that headlined many events and, and put on just fantastic fights. Yeah, I mean, you, you heard tonight, I mean, we're in Jacksonville, Florida, and the crowd was chanting Zombie. I mean, he's, he's one of the most beloved 
fighters in the UFC. You know, he's put on war after war after war for us, and uh, he's one of the nicest human beings in the world, and he's one of the most exciting fighters. Uh, you know, I love the kid, so. And uh, talking about Hamzat, um, what's his ceiling like on, on his star power? I mean, he's definitely a, a unique fighter. Do you put him side to side to the, to the rise of Conor McGregor, to the rise of Ronda Rousey? Yeah, I mean, he's gone that fast. I mean, the kid, the kid I mean, in Fight Island, remember that day, he said, I want to fight again next week. I said, okay, let's do it. And ever since then, man, he's been like a rocket ship. Uh, I think he's got three and a half million followers on Instagram. And you saw what happened tonight. You know, we've seen the UFC sort of... Uh, when have you ever seen somebody with four fights other than Conor and Ronda? Yeah. We've seen the, the UFC starting to go to other cities. Columbus, we saw the London show as well. Uh, now you have the, the Singapore show booked. Um, what does it feel to be back on the road and be sort of opening up again after sort of uh, the monotony of, of, of Las Vegas, Florida, and Texas? Yeah, I wouldn't say there was a monotony of Florida and Texas. I, I thank God for Florida and Texas. It wasn't for Florida and Texas. That's why I keep coming back here. I told these guys that I would reciprocate for doing what they did during the, uh, the pandemic. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to get back out on the road and start going to these new places. But, yeah, I'm, not, I'm definitely not tired of Florida or Texas. And last one for me. Um, we saw the featherweight belt on the line. Uh, a lot of contenders, obviously, in the division. But a lot of people are wondering what's going on with Zabid Magomed Sharipov. Do you, do you know what's going on with him? Uh, what's the update? He hasn't fought in a while. and you just haven't, haven't What's heard. going on with who? Zabit. Oh, Zabit? I don't know what's going on with Zabit. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. When's the last time you talked? I haven't. <laughs> I haven't done. <coughs> um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. The matchmakers would know what's going on with that. I, I, don't know. I have no idea. Thank you. Okay. Dana, uh, this is the third time you've been to Jacksonville, particularly in Florida. Three very different circumstances. In 2020, it was fanless. Last year was the return back, and this year it seems back to normal. Um, you mentioned specifically about Florida, but Jacksonville. How much of a part of, of, you know, of UFC has Jacksonville uh, meant to you in these last three years? Jacksonville means a lot to me. That's why I've come back here as many times as I have. I told them that I would. And, uh, you know, your mayor here has been incredible. You know, the governor came here tonight uh, to the event. He's been incredible. So, um, yeah, I, I, I love this town. I, I, I love the, your politicians. And, uh, yeah, I'd come back here every weekend. Be back here in 2023, I assume? Probably. If they call me, I will. All we got to do is call, and I'm here. Dana, uh uh, obviously, the pandemic has played its part, but it's been a very long time since Alex Volkanovski has fought back in Australia. Yep. Are there plans in place for the UFC to bring an event down there for Alex to headline this year? No, we, we won't be there this year. Where are you from? Australia. Well, you know what's going on over there, man. Come on. It's that, the place is still locked down. I can't, uh, I can't risk you know, trying to bring a show over there get there and have it shut down. I mean, I think that just happened to Formula One, didn't it? And that just happened to Formula One? I think it's still on. Huh? Still on. Melbourne? I don't know. Didn't it get canceled? Like, the cars were on the track and the, and the show got canceled? I don't know. Huh? It's happening? They didn't shut it down? I'll just show you what I know. Yeah, I was hearing yesterday that, that they shut it down. So I don't know. Hope I answered your question. <laughs> Dana, uh, you spoke about reach around the globe, and you have spoken before regarding going to Puerto Rico, uh, opening a performance center there. We had Tisha Torres fighting tonight, very close fight against Darren. We got Miguel Baeza next week. We got Rob Font and Carlos Candelario uh, later this month. So we have the fighters that we can put a show in Puerto Rico. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, Puerto Rico is, is, a, is a place that I would love to go do an event. Um, and yes, a PI too. Um, yeah, I mean, the answer is yes. Is there an update on regards on the, on the, on the PI? 
Well, we, we're, we're still looking for a spot in Mexico. We've had like, we had a spot, then COVID hit, so that whole thing fell apart. Then we had another uh, spot recently, and that, that deal fell through somehow, and uh, I think we actually have a new site. You know? Did we get a new site? Mexico. Yeah. Soon. But, but regarding Puerto Rico, do you have an, a date to open up PO or start building a PI over well, there? I don't even have Mexico yet. That's so what I'm Mexico saying. Mexico has to go first. Yeah, Mexico's first. Yeah. They don't? Yep. Uh, do you still think that uh, Hamzat Chimaev and Colby Covington, it's a good uh, fight for Hamzat uh, as a next fight? Yeah. Not, uh, Hamzat's going to be the number two guy in the world now. Maybe below Muhammad or another guy. What's that? Bilal Muhammad uh, or another guy. Is it opening for Hamzat? Yes, Bilal. Sure. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Dana Street down the middle. Uh, are you targeting any other cities in the U.S. right now to go back to for shows? To go back where? Are you targeting any other like U.S. cities for shows? Other U.S. cities, like uh, once you haven't returned to since the pandemic. What's the question? Yeah, yeah. We're, I mean, we're, yeah, we're going to go everywhere. I mean, we're 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 pretty much back on the road again. Yeah, I was I was asking for specifics. Sorry if that wasn't clear. Specific states. Or cities or venues you're looking yeah, to go we're to. Talking, we're talking about possibly Boston, uh, back to New York again. We're talking about, uh, we're looking at uh, what was some Austin. That's Texas, though. They don't want to hear Texas. They want to hear another state. They're tired of Texas and Florida. Salt Lake City, Utah, that's right. Salt Lake. Uh, Seattle, we were looking at. Um, yeah. All right, thank you. Toronto. Any plans for Mexico? Uh, no, we don't have anything lined up for Mexico. You done with me? That's Toronto. But what's that? That's Toronto. Toronto? Probably if, if, we, if we end up in Toronto, it'll be uh, later in the fall. Yep. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.